am I exploring? The forest. I even don't know what I'm exploring. Forest? What, you want me to put in the forest? Forest, yeah. <laughs> forest, wow. Well, okay. So he walks 20 kilometers due north, sure. and then he stops and starts walking 35 kilometers in a direction 60 degrees west of north, mm -hmm. when he suddenly stumbles across the forest ranger tower, and it's abandoned, too. So, he wants to keep track of that forest ranger tower, and thus, he wants to know the length of the shortest route between his beginning point and the forest ranger tower. So, we're... Placement vector. Indeed. So, we're going to try and find that one, two, three different ways. Alright, so let's pass this to our conversation with the diagram, so you're going to draw the diagram. So, Mr. Barry is exploring in the forest, and he starts from here and walks 20 kilometers due north. And let me just write that a little bit bigger. And then he goes 35 kilometers. Let me actually write it on top here. Let's do it using the law of cosine. This is 60 degrees, and these two are supplementary because they're along a straight line. Then this must be 120 degrees. And this angle, and of course, these two sides, are all we need to use the law of cosines. So the law of cosines states that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine theta. So c squared over here, a squared would be 20, b squared would be 35, Minus 2 times 20 times 35. Taking the square root of all of this, you get C is equal to approximately 48. Okay, folks, so let's uh, do the exact same problem, finding the resultant of 20 and 35 kilometers, uh, where the 35 kilometers is uh, 60 degrees offset the y-axis uh, using the law of parallelograms. So now the law of parallelograms is identical to the law of cosines, except for the angle that you use. So we have to be a little careful with that. So let's first draw our axes. We have, uh, what is it, north and west. Those are the only relevant axes in this problem. And um, we have a 20 kilometer north and 35 kilometers due west of, 60 degrees due west of north. And this is 35 kilometers. And our goal, our goal is to find the magnitude of, uh, of this resultant. Right? Okay, so now in the law of cosines, we took this 120 degree angle, but we cannot do that for the law of parallelograms because the law of parallelogram requires us to use the angle before you uh, put the two vectors head to tail. So what we have to do is shift this back, make a parallelogram, right? And when you shift this back, what angle do you have over here? Well, I don't know, but what I do know is that this angle must be 120 degrees, as the previous instructor said, because these two are supplementary. Well, if this is 120 and a parallelogram has supplementary uh, angles for adjacent angles, this must be 60 degrees because they have to add up to 180. Well, that's all I need. So, knowing that this is 35 and this is 20, we can now execute the law of parallelograms. Let me do it here. So we have c squared is a squared plus b squared. Again, identical to this one, but with a plus sign and a different angle. So we have c squared is equal to a squared. Put kilometers here. Let's do it just like the previous instructor did it. So you can see that they're the same, except for the angle. And here, cosine. Of now instead of 120 we're going to put 60 and so you should get the exact same answer which is 48 kilometers so what we have over here is the uh, x and y coordinate and the, the person uh, walks 20 uh, kilometer uh, to the north and then making uh, uh, what degree 60 degree to the northwest Okay, so if this is 60 degree, we, uh, we would be able to do, find uh, both uh, component of this vector. So let's call this one B, all right? So this one would be BX and this one would be uh, BY. 
So if this is 60, this must be 30, all right? So 2x is equal to 35. So 35, then x is? 17.5. 17.5. Then uh, what about the opposite to 30, x? So is it 17.5? Yeah. What is the opposite to the 60? 17.5 square root of 3. All right, now we have everything we need. So now I probably invade over here. Uh, so we have this one, and this one is how much? 20. 20. And we have uh, this one, and this 17. one is how much? 17.5. 17. 17. And uh, guess what? We have uh, this one. This one is how much? 17.5 root 3. And guess what? What is this one? 48. Uh, of course, if you write... 20 plus 35 is not 55. But 48. All right. So because we did not do scalar addition. Yes, we did a vector addition. All right. So I hope you understand vector addition by now.